and welcome. That's uh, six o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, tonight, Commissioner Stapleton is going to open us with the invocation and the pledge. Before we start, I'd like to ask for a moment of silence, remembrance of Chief Summers. Lord, we come before you tonight with a heavy heart. This community is hurting. Everyone's done a wonderful job and came together. We pray for this family and ask you to watch over those children and let them know how much we all care. Also, I'd like to remember and ask you to pray for the safe return of those two firefighters that are missing at sea. Those folks in, in that area are feeling what we're feeling. Just please put your arms around them and all the fire families as they continue to search. I ask you to give us knowledge and trust in each other to make good decisions as we move forward in this county. And we do this in your name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, first item on the agenda is approval of the August 6, 2019 Register Board Meeting Minutes. Do I have any changes, corrections? Motion to approve. None. I got a motion to approve by Commissioner Richardson. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Hill. Any further discussion? Hear none. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, moving on to the consent agenda. I have two through 13. Any of those items wishing to be pulled for discussion? Hear none. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Got a motion to approve by Commissioner Fleming. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Richardson. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right, our next one is time specific. We got one minute, so I'm gonna wait that one minute before we go on to these presentations. You got anything for 136 and I-75, Mr. Harris, item 18? No, sir, but I can fill your one minute if you need me to. Hey, go ahead. Um, I'd like to announce that uh, I've appointed Eddie Hand to be our interim fire chief uh, fire services. I believe he'll do us a good job. Um, if you recall, that's how Chief Summers came in, was on an interim basis, and I worked with him for a few minutes. Pull your mic a little closer. Can you hear me now? A little bit. Okay. Eddie Hand's going to be our interim fire chief. I think he'll do a great job. He's got good people out there working with him. Uh, he and Tim White and I have met extensively over the last week and a half. Spent a lot of time together trying to make sure that we're not overlooking anything, nothing slips through the cracks. But uh, I just want to make that announcement uh, this evening. All right. Thank you, sir. Any questions for Mr. Harris? I don't. Well, I got some, just not about that. Well, that for now. <laughs> Commissioner Staple, and we've, we've prepared that uh, prefab pothole patch. We're going to put a batch of it in the back of your truck before you leave here this evening. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take more than one bag. <laughs> thank you, sir. All right, it is 6.05. Oh, moving on to item 14, it's 6.05 p.m. or soon thereafter as the matter can be heard. Final plat approval of Central Place North Subdivision. Ron Meeks, Planning and Zoning Director. Mr. Chairman, board members, uh, you have the final plat approval before you tonight for uh, Central Place North Subdivision. Uh, the Board of County Commissioners had granted preliminary plat approval on the subdivision back in May, I believe May 7th meeting. Um, 
regulations state that uh, it has to you have to wait at least 30 days before the board can issue final plat approval on a potential subdivision. Uh, but this property is located in Section 32, Township 4 South, Range 15 East, located in an agricultural one zoning district. Um, size of the property is 50.10 acres in size. Subdivision contains 10 lots. Um, land development regulations do require that the lots in the subdivision have direct access to a paved road. Subject property will access Central Road, which is a paved road. Um, when the board did grant the preliminary plat approval, the plat, the final plat was a, was prepared in accordance with the land development regulations. Um, final plat has been reviewed by another surveyor for compliance with Chapter 177 Florida statutes, and the uh, plat was found to be in compliance. So at this time, we would be asking the board to grant final plat approval, and then uh, Logan has the mylar for the chairman's signature. All right. Anyone from any commissioners have any questions for Mr. Meeks? Not here, none. Anyone from the public have any questions or any comments? Not here, none. Do I have a motion to approve the final plat? So moved. Got a motion to approve by Commissioner Richardson. Second. Second by Commissioner Fleming. Any further discussion? Here, none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed, same sign. All right, at 6.05 p.m. for soon thereafter, as the matter can be heard, hold a final plat approval for Central Place South subdivision. Mr. Meeks. Mr. Chairman, board members, uh, this is uh, also a final plat approval. This is for property on the south side of Central Road. Uh, this property is also located in Section 32, Township 4 South, Range 15 East. Size of this property is 35.07 acres in size, and this subdivision contains a total of seven lots. Um, access for this subdivision, again, will be off of Central Road, which is a paved road. Uh, plat was prepared in accordance with the land development regulations. It was also reviewed for compliance of Chapter 177, and both have been met. So we would also be asking for final plat approval of this subdivision for the chairman's signature as well. All right, any questions or discussion from the board? Hearing none. Any questions or comments from the public? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Motion to approve by Commissioner Richardson. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Hill. Any dis further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All Thank opposed, you. same sign. That's two years in a row we've managed to schedule hearings for Mr. Meeks to be at on uh, draft pick night for football teams. <laughs> you think he'd move it to a Monday or a Wednesday? Could we ask Mr. Meeks to stay over in case I have any yeah. more questions? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right, moving on to item 16, presentation uh, by the Census Bureau. We'll let Mr. Norris open us up with this. Good afternoon. Uh, good to be here once again. Beautiful Swanee County. And uh, just so you guys know, uh, Miss Jennifer Pyle's with us tonight uh, with the U.S. Census Bureau. She's going to be making a presentation. And uh, depending on which side of this you're on, uh, we've had requests for the 30-minute version. We've had requests for the 30-second version. So uh, she's going to give it to you. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask her. But we've already been to the city of Live Oak. We've been to the town of Branford. And uh, with just kind of a short version, but she's uh, going to be a little more detailed for you tonight. So uh, I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Jennifer if she would come up. And uh, <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Norris. I want to thank the council and Chair Gamble and members of the gallery for your time and attention today. So again, my name is Jennifer Pyle, and I am with the U.S. Census Bureau. I'm a partnership specialist, so my charter is very simple. It's to get out throughout the communities, the areas of responsibility that I have. And fortunately for me, and hopefully for you, Sewanee County is one of the seven counties that I'm responsible for. So I want to um, get out there and engage with, educate, and encourage people to participate in the U.S. Census. So just a little bit of a background. The U.S. Census uh, participates and partakes on the biggest fact-finding mission that the United States or really anybody in the world 
uh, ever has. And every 10 years, we go out and we count every resident in the United States. It doesn't matter where you are, where you're from, what your background is, what your job is, everybody is to be counted equally. Once, only once, and in the right place. So the first census started in 1790, so our founding fathers and in their infinite wisdom said, okay, how are we gonna distribute taxes? Well, the fairest way is to distribute among the 13 colonies based on population. So it took them three years, it was done on horseback, and they went out and they had individuals that actually counted as many people as they could in order to distribute uh, the money, which at the time was only $3.9 million. Now, here we are, 2020 is going to equate to $675 billion annually over a 10-year period. So we want to make sure that Suwannee County gets every dollar, every penny, everybody gets counted, because at the end of the day, that is one of the three major factors that the U.S. Census means is dollars. So again, the, the goal, primary goal is just to count everybody once, only once, and in the right place. So the big change for the 2020 census uh, compared to the past is that it will be done electronically. So encouragement across the board is for people to participate, self-report with electronic devices. You can do it on your phone, you can do it on a tablet, you can do it on a computer. If you don't have access to a personal computer, if you don't have internet, then we're garnering the support of different organizations such as libraries, uh, friends, family. Other individuals cannot provide information or complete a questionnaire for a household. Households have to, by law, do that themselves, but there's nothing that says that nobody can help them. And, and that goes to, again, garnering support from other organizations across the county so that we can make sure that we do get an accurate count. Now, there will be ability to do it over the phone, and if people do not self-report by um, mid-May to late May, then that's when boots on the ground are going to go around and knock on doors. And so that's where the enumerators will go door to door for the households that have been identified that have not self-reported. So there will be an opportunity, people will get mailers to their residences, reminders, cards for each household saying it is census time. Official date is 1 April, but the reminders will start going out around 12 um, March. And there will be three reminders. People have opportunities to self-report before somebody comes knocking on household doors. Some of the uh, important things to note, and again, every time there's something major that comes along, whether it be a crisis, whether it be an event such as a decennial census, there's always going to be people out there that are trying to conduct nefarious activities. So we want everybody to get information out there to the public, to your family, to your friends, that these are items that the census is never going to ask. The questionnaire is only going to be seven questions. It will be nine for the primary household member, and that is only because they have two additional questions to answer on the questionnaire relative to how many people live in their household and if there is anybody living there that also lives someplace else throughout the year. The other seven questions are very simple. It's your name, it's your date of birth, it's your sex, it's your race. They're never going to ask for things like a social security number. They're never going to ask for donations. They will never call your house because we've already had reporting through law enforcement agencies that there are individuals out there trying to defraud people, calling, saying, I'm from the U.S. Census. We need your bank information or we need your social security number. That will never happen. It's a very straightforward questionnaire. It will be sent to your house. If you do not self-respond, if you do self-respond, it's going to be very straightforward questions. Privacy and confidentiality. Everybody in the U.S. Census Bureau, including myself, is held to very strict guidelines for security uh, reasons. It's by uh, Title 13 of the U.S. Code. I could go to jail for five years, be fined $250,000, as could anybody else that has access to the data. So it is held, it is secured, it is constantly monitored. I have four different layers that I have to go through to get into my government laptop. There's a code that changes every minute that I have to time just right in order to get into it so other people cannot access that. So it is very safe. And the information that is collected, again, is just statistical data. All your personal identifying information, such as names and date of birth, sex, what your race is, that in totality are those seven questions, are stripped when it's sent over to the White House. It's just numbers. That's all they care about. Because at the end of the day, we need to know what is the population in Suwannee because they need to know what are going to be congressional districting, what are the seats allocations, and what is the money. 
So leading into what are the most important factors, why do we do a census? So in addition to the money, the $675 billion annually distributed throughout the United States um, over the 10-year period, political power. So it determines apportionment of the congressional seats. It's redistricting at the national, state, and local level. And then everybody understands money. So if, if you know, there's individuals out in the community that may not really particularly care about the political alignment that it could mean, everybody understands money. Because regardless of the station you're at in life, everybody has services, they use services, they need services, or they have people in their household that need services that many times, quite frankly, just are not there because the money is not. So for the 2020 census, the numbering will significantly change based on what the estimates throughout the years with the American Census Survey that go on throughout the years, not just the decennial. We added two seats from 2010, so we are up to 27 seats, and we are expected to gain two more seats in Florida. And again, that's on population. So if everybody is counted, and we are all counted equally, then our numbers will equate to additional congressional districting. Um, these are some of the different ways that the census is used. People are not aware that it goes to Title I funding, it goes to roads, it goes to schools, it goes to health care, it goes to emergency services, a variety of social services. There has been studies, we get asked quite frequently, well, what does it mean per head? What am I worth? Am I worth $1,500? Am I worth $2,000? If Suwannee has 44,191 people, what does, what's that going to equate to? We do not have those calculations. There have been uh, individual entities that have figured out allocations of money throughout the years. I have heard anywhere from $1,450 to $2,000, but the census does not do that. But that just does give you a, a roundabout idea of what it means. And if you look at the numbers over the years, it's quite significant. So there was a study done by the George Washington University that showed that just in one fiscal year, there was $589.7 billion from census money that was distributed through the states for programs such as Section 8 housing, uh, Head Start programs, national school lunch programs. So those are the type of uh, areas that you'll look at for funding. Now, specifically to Suwannee, in 2000, Florida had a 71% self-response rate. Suwannee had 59%. 2010, you guys jumped up significantly from 59 to 70%. Florida, 74%. This year, there's no reason why I don't think Suwannee couldn't be in the 80s to the 90 percentile. There are areas in Florida that are at the 95, 96 percentile. Those are predominantly retired, older communities. But if we get the word out and we get everybody to participate, then there's no reason that we can't be up there as well. Simple pie chart, this just gives you an idea. The blue section is the participation rate that we had in the last census, and the red part is what was not participating. So if you could just visualize dollars in there, what, what could that 30% of non-participation rate gone towards? I'm sure we all have people here, we can think of programs maybe that family members, friends, family, neighbors have needed where the, the, the pot's been empty, the money wasn't there. You know, so so that, that red portion's quite a bit. So how can we help? Everybody can start now. We can all help by spreading the word to everybody that we know, making sure everybody knows it's safe, it's easy, it's important, participate in the census. But I'm here today to initiate and get signed and approved, hopefully, by the council for a complete count committee. And what that will be is an agreement with Sewanee County and the U.S. Census Bureau to participate, to join, to partner, to get the information out to the county, to all members of the community, so that we can all um, make sure that we participate. The census is also hiring, so if you know anybody that is looking for a part-time job, they are good-paying jobs. They average between $14 and $19 an hour, and those are available through 2020census.gov slash jobs. There's also a phone number on the screen. If anybody wants my card, I can also provide that if anybody wants additional information. So we're going to form a complete count committee. What does that mean? It means that all sectors of the community, uh, heads that can reach out, that have tenants in the community, and touch and be a touchstone for all and everybody that lives here so that we can go ahead and get that word out, messaging and awareness. So the highest elected officials, community leaders appoint a steward, a liaison, which has already been accomplished. Mr. Jimmy Norris is the U.S. Census Bureau's primary liaison. Um, Mr. Harris, thank you for handling that. So we already have a very good working relationship and I also appreciate the council's 
uh, kind manners to make sure that we could get out and we could also brief Branford and Live Oak on the same information. So what they do, what the Complete Count Committee does is we, we bring people from all different sectors of the community together and we basically, we roll up our sleeves and we figure out what it is that we're going to do and how we can get the uh, information out to all different groups throughout the community. Target populations include children under five, an estimated over one million children were not counted in 2010. Now, Suwannee County has an estimate of 5.1% children out of their 44,191 estimate. So you can imagine if a, a, even a, a fraction of them were not counted, that's money that's left in the pot. So what can we do? We can get organized now. And that is going to start tomorrow. We are going to have our first Complete Count Committee workshop. And that's where the identified individuals for the Complete County are going to sit down and we're going to help identify other areas in the community, other people, trusted voices that can also come on board and have ideas and garner support and get that information out. And there's a myriad of ways that we do that, but we're going to discuss that tomorrow. So ultimately, the success of the 2020 Census depends on everybody. Everybody in this room, everybody that you know, self-reporting. So how am I going to help? So I provide a toolkit. I provide um, information, updates. I'm here briefing people. I will go out to different organizations. If people approach me and ask me, hey, there's a Boys and Girls Club, there's a Girl Scout troop, uh, the fire station is hosting some type of event, a fundraiser, and you think that there are people that otherwise may not hear the message, may want the message, need the information, I'm ha happy to do that, happy to go out, whether it's a small group or a big group, formal, informal, question, answer, whatever anybody needs. This is one of the tools that we uh, share and provide and will help um, show how to utilize as an area mapper. It's a web application that enables the community to look at where the low response rates were in 2010 and where we can really hone in, drill down, and focus on now. I'm sorry, this is a very poor version, but essentially this is one of the seven area, tracked areas that Sewanee has that has been identified as a low response rate. It's a 23.7%. It's the, the northern, I call it the cone, the furthest northern part of Sewanee that we, we will have to identify, okay, what are the likely reasons that maybe this, in, this specific area has low reporting? Is it because they have young children that aren't being reported? Is it the elderly that are shut-ins maybe? People that just don't trust the government, people that don't have access to information? And that's essentially what the committee does is we look at, okay, where's the low response rate? How can we get the information out? So we're going to start a complete count committee. Everybody's going to encourage participation. We're going to raise awareness. Um, and then we're also going to help recruit census workers. Does anybody have any questions? I tried to split the time between uh, 0 and <laughs> 30. We have questions. Yes, ma'am. Sure. Ma if you got any questions, please come to the podium. Your name and address for the record. Does the council have any questions for me while she's approaching? I'm good, thank you. Hi, my name is Anita Williams. I live at 4242 Don Luis Drive in Los Angeles. But my question is for young people. Is there an age limit for uh, young people that can apply? And I was looking online, I see Jacksonville, but f will people in Live Oak be hired specifically, or is it a, a district? Um, there is hiring done across the nation that includes uh, Live Oak, it includes Brantford, it includes uh, Sewanee uh, in general. Uh, everybody can apply as long as you are 18. You do have to have a vehicle. You do, um, even if you've got a criminal record, that's been one of the questions asked that everybody's looked at individually. Felony records, typically people cannot be hired or will not be hired, but that it does not mean we are to dissuade anybody from applying, but if you are 18, you have a vehicle and you have a driver's license. Those are the, the requisites. And you can apply online and it goes into the system, you'd be contacted, you get uh, tested, you get trained, and it is only a temporary job, but one nice thing about it is, is a lot of people that have part-time jobs, that are single parents, that are retired, and people that just don't want to work full-time, but they want to be active in the civic process, there are many people that apply for that purpose. So. Even though it might only be, you know, two or three months work, it's good work. It also gives uh, people a foot in the door for government. If you want to get that wrong and start climbing the ladder, that's an opportunity as well. Good evening, Commissioners. John Koch, 180 Road. One thing this lady failed to tell you is, is that this information is kept secret 
and is not available to the public for 72 years. Just thought you'd like to know that. The other thing that she failed to mention is, is that the census is already at work. The census, the first phase, uh, and then she was talking about the second or third phase, I'm not quite sure, but the first phase is to go out and make sure that we know where every house is, where every apartment is, where every group home is, where the homeless are. Let's say they're probably still at I-10 and 129 so that these people can be counted. So there are people out in the street right now doing this work in preparation to, to make sure that the households are counted where they are. And, and in Suwannee County's cases, we're going to be adding a lot of new addresses. So uh, it's already started. Uh, uh, I, uh, I'm one of them. <laughs> so you can see my friendly face, me coming up to the house and, and to, to uh, verify the address. And that's all that's going to be uh, asked for by this, this, uh, uh, this phase of the census. Okay? I have one question to you. Sir, is that probably to her? Or to no, me? to you. Yes, sir. You said 72 years. Yes, that, that, that information is kept confidential for 72 years. And, and, and I have to, I've taken an oath, which is very similar to the military oath. I just don't have officers, you know, above me, so to speak. But, but uh, uh, I, I have to keep all that information secret for all my life. I cannot reveal anything that I have learned in my work at the census. Depends on how long you live. Well, I'm, I'm cursed, <laughs> Commissioner. I'm, I'm cursed, at least through the 90s, maybe even on past 100. I always believe. <laughs> so I appreciate the gentleman's point. So yes, he is accurate. It is 72 years and one day that information is held uh, confidentially. And that goes back to what I stated as far as Title 13 of the U.S. Code. Um, in regards to the individuals that are out currently, those are not the enumerators that go door to door, but those are actually address canvassers. And those are individuals that are going out that have a list of structures that have four walls and a ceiling that are inhabitable that individuals may dwell in that may not be on the list. So they are verifying so that we do not miscount. Um, in regards to his comment about group quarters or individuals that are homeless, those are counted separately. We do have separate programs. Those are not counted by enumerators that go door to door. Those are special programs. And that would go to prisons, college, the administrators for those facilities are actually chartered with capturing an accurate count for them. So that is a very good point. Thank you for mentioning it because we do want to make sure that every single person, whether they're homeless, whether they're citizens, whether they're not, are counted accurately in the community. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I got a question. Yes, sir. Uh, I remember that I asked someone asked the question when we was at the conference in Orlando. You may want to clarify to the people. If you have, say you have children that's in college, are they counted where they going to college or are they counted they, where they They live? should be counted. Now, they, the term usual, it's where their usual place of dwelling is. So where they usually lay their head. So we want to say six plus months out of the year. Now, if there is a residence that is split because they're in, particularly in Florida, there's a lot of individuals that own more than one home or they're snowbirds. So that would be, if they can say it's six months, six months exactly, it would be, where are you on one April? But if for college students, if they're away at college for nine plus months out of the year, they will be counted or should accurately be counted at their place of education. That same thing with military, since military is That's correct. Are well, typically back where they where they came from. If they're correct, if they're in training, uh, right. So if there's bases where in they're they're in training six plus months out of the year, and they do not have an established household where they are six plus months out of the year, they would be counted there. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. yours. Appreciate Did you have anything else, Mr. Norse? No. I just want to thank Jennifer uh, for coming up tonight. She's going to be here tomorrow, so if you guys do have questions, and, and there is a lot more to this, but we kind of we ask her to kind of cut it down. So if you need more information, she's a wonderful resource. The presentation was actually six hours. She did the <laughs> abbreviated version. Uh, that's when Mr. Norris gives it. The, the type of comments the gentleemen in the back had are awesome because that is accurate and that, that, that brings to light that brings to light information. Mr. Coat. Uh, yes. Yeah, maybe we need to put him on the complete there count you go. committee. Well, 
He probably knows where a lot of people are that maybe are not, but that's how we identify people. But there, but it does go to his point that there are a bunch of, there are a lot of different um, counters. I won't say enumerators because those are the door-to-door -door boots on the ground, but there are different types of organizations that are actively involved well before 1 April. So thank you for that point. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you for your time. All right, moving on to item 17. Staff reports, Catherine Allen. Commissioner, Chairman. Uh, I did want to um, first say thank you for all of the show of support for Jamie. It really was touching to be a part of that and just wanted to say thank you. Um, I also wanted to let you know that our two new ag agents started on Friday and we're really excited. Um, I think that uh, these two are going to be awesome additions to our team. We have Sylvia Willis who is the commercial horse, so that is taking over Dee Broughton who moved into that regional specialized position. And uh, um, so she's going to be dealing with the agronomic row crops and the vegetables. And then Courtney Darling, um, who is the livestock forages and natural resources agent. And um, uh, her husband went to work for uh, Shenandoah. So um, exciting to see that they're, they're transitioning and they're looking at housing and all that kind of exciting things. So we're really excited about that. A um, couple of things. Um, Many of you know that we have been involved, and me specifically, in some of the weight management research um, projects. Those were two-year studies that we had with adults. And one of the findings was through that research, we knew that the lifestyle interventions that we were doing, they worked and that they could provide a significant amount of weight loss. Um, and it improved health and all those kinds of things. But there were two things from those, those studies that we found. And one is the long-term maintenance of the treatment, that people didn't have that built-in support system to help them maintain that le healthy lifestyle. And then the other one was the translation and dissemination to underserved communities. And um, so one of our, um, she's two years, you know, we always say she's new, um, but one of our uh, newer agents, Kim Griffin, has participated in a research project that kind of continues that and it's called uh, um, Rural Health. And so it's looking at church communities to, um, for these, these health interventions and that built-in support system. And so I do have some um, information on um, where they are so far. And they are seeing, right now, they're at the phase of the project where they're seeing um, changes in behavior and loss of weight. Um, but we will see where this leads to in terms of long term, you know, does, does this work as we look at that? So I'll pass that around for you. I also wanted to let you know um, open enrollment for 4-H is underway and we'll be having a field day on September, uh, I didn't write that down, I think it's either the 5th or the 8th, it's that first Saturday. Thank you. So, seven. Thank you. Appreciate that, Eddie. Um, and um, this year it's going to be a little different because the kids will actually get to see some of the project areas that the clubs have. We have 14 clubs in the uh, community, and those are all volunteer-led. So we have fingerprinted, background-checked, um, and screened um, volunteers who commit to the youth. And so you guys are all welcome to come out and uh, check it out, but also anyone who has youth between the ages of 5 and 18 can um, come out and see if they're interested in signing up for a club. Uh, we're in the middle of Master Gardener training, and as you know, this is a very important training for us in the community because when we train these individuals, um, part of the requirement from these um, certified Master Gardeners, which is a national certification, is that they give back to the community. So that first year, they are required to give 70 hours of volunteer time back to the community. And every year after that, there is a minimum requirement of 35 to maintain their active status. Most of our Master Gardeners give, you know, way more than that and continue in the program for a really long time. But we do have a new cadre of um, Master Gardeners that are going through that training. Um, 
We're also um, presenting who gets grandma's yellow pie plate. That is how to transfer non-titled property. So typically, we make plans for the house and the car and the boat. Those are those things that have a piece of, of uh, paper that tell who the owner is. But what about those things that have sentimental value? And um, we find that heirs, through the research, heirs are five times more likely to fight over personal property than they are over money. And so starting those conversations are really important in understanding how to um, distribute those or ways that you might be distributing those are really important. And so we have that coming up. Um, also, uh, we have a professional association that the agents will be attending. And um, I will be. Uh, um, uh, providing an abstract there, so um, talking about some of our our um, um, programs that we've done with the SHIP, the First Time Home Buyers Program, where we've started talking about integrated pest management and helping them to understand um, a little bit more about that um, so that they know questions that they can ask the pest control company, how they can help in that. Um, and so we'll be presenting it there and also hopefully at the International Federation of Home Economics in Atlanta um, in the spring. Um, and I, the final thing that I wanted to mention is um, we have a jokester, um, Barry Baker, and I don't know if he's ever called you and asked you those full moon questions. Um, our office, when he does have to call our office, sometimes um, we have unusual requests and you know, you're like, well, I don't know if this is Barry or not. And, and so um, you answer, you know, you try to answer the question as, as well as you can. So um, recently, I got a call, um, and they said that the president of the University of Florida was on the line for me. And so I picked up the phone, and I thought, all right, Barry. Well, I've never talked to um, <laughs> President Fox before, and it was actually President Fox. <laughs> um, so I'm glad that I didn't say, yeah, yeah, Barry. But uh, it, it definitely gave me a tickle. Um, and I will be serving on the search and screen committee for the um, new vice president for IFAS, so the Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences. So we'll be launching an international search for that, and I'm the representative for extension. Um, so just an FYI about that. Is there anything else that I can answer? or any questions? I'll pass these out so that you can see this. All right, thank you. Do you all have any questions for Ms. Kath? I just had one question. Yes, sir. Was it just me, or was it when she was talking about weight loss, like she was looking at me more than anyone else? I, mean, I, just, I, I didn't notice I she was thinking. looking at that. It's really healthy oh, behaviors, yeah. but it does. Those healthy behaviors do result a lot of times in weight loss. Right. So I think she spread the uh, the, uh, eye, the eye contact between okay. you and me a okay. lot because I was thinking the exact same. Thing. <laughs> Thank you. All right. She got it. With two birds with one stone. There, Mr. Hale. She said behavior. Yes. <laughs> I call it that. <laughs> okay. All right. Mr. Harris, do we have any additional agenda items? Uh, no, sir. All right. That winds up uh, the agenda. So we'll recess out of the board meeting and go into our uh, workshop for the budget workshop. Um, Y'all help remind me, Was there was pretty much one issue that was left on the table for discussion and I think the sheriff was going to come back talk to us some um, was there anything else I see everybody leaving it right before he comes up that anybody may have had yeah. no I don't remember anything else. Nina can you remind us where we're at with uh, the budget and contingency Anyone have any any questions for Nina or anything, or just want to go right into? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. I just, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to one know if she, we clarified all those numbers and got them nailed down and everything, because there's 
a lot of questions over the contingency numbers during the last workshop. How, how, in other words, how, uh, how confident are you that that number is right? Mike. I think that's what she was trying to do. No, that wasn't. Um, that was a recorder. Okay, a recorder. Okay. I, <laughs> I know with this Barry. rain, it's it's even Barry. harder here. So, um. that mic move. Will you give that mic to her, please? I heard everything you said, but I don't. I think some folks out there didn't hear anything. So, Nina, tell us again what the contingency. What what is the contingency that you're showing currently? $500,000. You still have to on. <laughs> <Bend it on. laughs> $500,000. Uh, Barry, Barry, just stand there if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <I'm kidding. laughs> That's a prank standing back. <laughs> Is that one on? Oh, yeah. yeah. They, uh, they don't sound like it's working while I was asking. It's working. All right. I'm getting it. That worked. <laughs> it's working. I don't know. Well, then if no one else has any other questions, we'll go back to the uh, last item that we were discussing, which was the uh, sheriff's office budget. I have a question, one question. No, yes, sir. On that one number that kept coming up, what was that number? The 170000 yeah, gracious it. me. <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> There it is. Do I have a bet that you can get it out of me one more that time? Was it. That was number 12. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, if you don't mind, we'll have to toss it back and forth. I'm <laughs> over. All right. Uh, we, we looked over budget and had a couple ideas. Uh, first idea or that I'm going to present would be we would just the sheriff's office we'd have to uh, start cutting some of our services and we would start with district five <laughs> how much will that get us <laughs> all right yeah. we got three for that <laughs> we go ahead and approve it without even a number <laughs> Look, he asked me first for my comments, and that's why I started down here. Oh, my gosh. I didn't think y'all were going to that, so I got plan B. I know Ronnie won. Thank you. I got you. <laughs> Sam, do you mind? It? Oh, sorry. You got an extra one there? He said you didn't matter. Thank you. Uh, you know, as you know, as we as you see, we're kind of taking a gamble here because, you know, we, uh, you know, the easiest thing to done would be to, you know, to cut the raises, you know. But, you know, actually, I didn't, I didn't want to do that because, just like I was saying, we having some issues or problems retaining some people because of, you know, the the salary wise and insurance and so forth. So, I left that, I left the raises alone, and we then we, we started cutting into the uh, the operating. Uh, of it, you know, and you know, as we discuss, you know, we give back, you know, a certain amount, you know, every year, and all, and like I say, all that's, you know, it's, it's not a given, you know, all depends if we have a good year and don't have any, you know, catastrophes or anything going on, then we're good. So, um, so that's what we've done. We, you know, we come, went into the operating part of it, and also, you know, we adjusted our insurance. Uh, we went with the uh, last year's rates, so we cut that down. So. You're looking at you know a total of 221, I think 221, I think it is. But anyway, so it's uh, the all, all increase from last year to this year is a, is a 0.40 percent, uh, not even one percent. 
And, uh, you know, from, you know from, from last year to this year, it's only $40,000. Uh, guys, I think that's kind of scraping the bottom for us, you know, and hope that we can, you know, we can get by with that. Um, you know, and here again, we're, you know, if, if y'all agree to this, you know, we're, we're giving up at, at the front, the front end, you know, and at, uh, and actually we're going to, you know, be, you know, tight with the taxpayers' money and do what we can to, you know, save a dollar throughout the, the year. And, uh, and then hopefully we'll have, you know, some left over to give back the following year um, uh, and in the end of this 1920 uh, year. Uh, but, you know, we'll just see what happens. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I just want to ask for clarification. Sheriff, I, you said 221. I, I'm getting more than that. You've actually got 21 up here on the insurance, and then you've got 200 on operating and a 78 on machinery and equipment. So, well, yeah, that machinery equipment was already there. That was already in. That the, was already there. That was already cut out from the. Yeah, that was rock out from the original uh, original okay. one. All that right. was the. Um, so that was that was the cars. There's the three yeah. extra patrol cars yeah. from last year yeah. that we okay. bought for the resource officers. So it's 221. Right. Yeah, it's, it's 221. Okay. So, just for clarification, that's what you going to give back the two hundred twenty-one. Yeah, I mean, well, we're you know we're not I mean, when you say give back, I mean, we're just we're cutting. You He's know? actually cutting um, this. Yeah, you know, the it, proposed budget for next year. By yeah, so we're you know we're and like I say, as you see, it ain't it ain't much of an increase at all. Um, and 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 like just like I say, hopefully that you know we'll 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 get by, and like I say, we'll we'll you know. Try to save a dollar here and there, what we can. Hopefully, we'll give back, you know, at the end of the 1920, you know, uh, budget year. You know, but but here again, we're giving it up here in the, in the front part versus the end part, you know. So I'm kind of taking a, a a gamble that everything will go smooth, but you know, we'll see. But then I just would like to remind each of every one of y'all that, you know, we discussed this during the budget meeting. You says, and I had the issues about, well, you know. It would look bad on me if I had to come back before the uh, the commissioner saying, "Hey, I'm running short on my budget," and you all would say, "Assure me that it wouldn't be a problem." Just to, just to kind of remind everybody, and, and hopefully we don't have to do that. Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. Uh, commissioner Fleming, I think to clarify, the way I understood it is he's got he's going to cut his budget by two hundred twenty-one thousand this year, right? And then uh, at the end of the year, he's bringing us back three hundred twenty-one. Okay. So I think that's going to I think if I understood that. <laughs> well, ho hopefully we can, you know, but I, but don't hold me to it because we're, <laughs> you know, I was, I forget who I was talking to, but we can give it to you as the front end or the back end. So right now if, as we're going to give it to you the front end and, and hopefully we can in the back end too, you know. Um, uh, we just, we'll just see how, how, the, how the year goes. But here again, guys, you know, uh, and I, you know, I think well, Eddie, Eddie is here. Um, you know, they're having you know problems retaining you know employees as far as money wise because of the competition he has with the bigger, bigger departments, and I am too. You know, so you know, I, I wish we, I wish I could you know increase the, you know the guy's salary. You know, and but here again, we just you know I understand everybody needs to save a dollar and try to you know keep our uh, or keep our budget down, but you know. Hopefully we can, you know, start raising our, that's, that's why I kept the, the raises, you know, because the issues that we're having retaining people and, and plus, you know, uh, you know, it's going to help, it's going to help everybody out. Mr. Chairman. Well, I wanted you to keep the raises in there and I'm glad you did. Um, but I think you and everybody else recognizes that there's no way for us to compete with the state, what they're offering uh, for FHP. Uh, fortunately, they have a limited number of positions to fill and uh, hopefully they'll get full and stop hiring people from us. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I hope, hope they will. Um, I've had discussions with them once they're recruiting around here. They need to go somewhere else. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, Sheriff, I've got a question for you. Uh, and, and I'm going to preface this question by saying that I still think you got room to move. And, um, and I realize what you're doing and I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to quibble over it. Uh, but I do believe that, that by, giving money back to the county uh, you do have and and accomplishing all that you set out to accomplish in the budget uh, that you have for the past two years since you've had your budgets um, since you've been elected in office I believe that 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 reveals that you are doing a good job in making sure you maintain that budget and even to that point uh, uh, even going beyond that having said that 
you said something last time that really concerned me, and you brought it up again uh, today. Um, and I, and I'll, I'll get to you why in just a second. You said uh, by cutting your budget when we requested $350,000 to cut your budget, that, your, uh, that would take away your ability to negotiate um, or minimize, if nothing else, your ability to negotiate with some of your officers, keep them where they're at, and, uh, or to hire good officers from other places, uh, which allows me to believe that uh, your salaries and the increase in your salaries are not, obviously, they're not, that's not exactly the picture. But um, my concern is that your officers are important, but not more important or not any more important than other employees in the county that support your officers, such as your dispatchers. Um, and I am really concerned because dispatch has been a problem area for, in our county for a while in the quality of training these guys get. And it's also been a problem that's been recognized by all of us, as well as you, that they're not getting paid enough. They're not on par with the counties around us, or at least we know for sure on Columbia County, they're a dollar, half, dollar and a half less on the uh, beginning. So I, I'm sticking with my $350,000, but I'd be willing to give back 50,000 of it if you can deal with these, um, these dispatchers that come on that are new, get them trained. We know they're gonna have to get training with the new um, radio systems because I, I can guarantee you there's gonna be patches. There's gonna be systems in that dispatch that's gonna require some patches. And if that's the case, it's gonna require more training. I think that if, if, you, if you tell me that you will um, vow to deal with this issue, I'd like to see them get corrected. We have corrected uh, positions um, around the county as far as their pay is concerned. We've corrected EMS, I fire an EMS, we've corrected truck drivers. Uh, I think it's time to start correcting some of these dispatchers and get these guys up pay so we're not training people to go somewhere else. It's important that we get people trained and they stay put. Um, and, and I'm willing to put $50,000 towards that and reduce my request from three fifty dollars to $300,000, which getting closer to your number, but it's not there yet because we know $80,000 of it was in, um, was in um, the difference in the health insurance and remind me what the other one was. Um, the other one we reduced it by. I hated to bring that up because I knew I'd forget it. Um, the cars? No, there's $80,000 that we talked about before and I didn't write it down. Um, uh, there was a total of $80,000 between 21,000 plus the, another $60,000 or so that we figured in that was uh, over budget. And I can't remember where it was at, but it, at any rate, um, I mean, you're technically reducing your budget. If you if you subtract the twenty one thousand, you're just reducing your budget budget by two hundred thousand dollars, and that's it. Because you wouldn't have spent that twenty one thousand anyway, since the insurance was was already figured in at a two percent reduction. So what I'm saying is, is give your guys an adequate raise over at dispatch, get them trained up to stay there, and and I will come up. I'll come down a little bit on my number. Okay, let me make sure I'm following you. You're, you're saying to raise a dispatcher's salary? Yes, I am. I'm saying we hire these guys in at ten dollars and some and change an hour. That's what I mean. I, and then we give them when they get trained, we give them a dollar something raise, and they're getting thirteen fifty over in Columbia County right now just to come over trained and ready to go. That's a dollar fifty less than what they're paying right now. Ronnie, Commissioner Richardson. Uh, we, okay, that's why I kept the raises in there. That, that's for everybody. That's not just patrol guys. That's for everybody. I'm not talking about the 1% or 50 cents plus 1%. I'm talking about bringing them up to okay. a, a place where they're not uh, going somewhere else for more I, money. I didn't, I didn't do it this year because I didn't, I didn't want to, you know, because I just want to keep the numbers down. But I can show you the last two years, them dispatchers has got a, th uh, each last two years, I got $1,000 plus the raise the last two years, and no, no one else that did. Wasn't, wasn't, that wasn't in the budget. Yes, sir. Well, we, 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 we gave it to them, though. 
we, we took it out of the budget because, just like you said, the numbers were so low. So, so I have done that, you know, and, and I'm, you know, and if I could have done it this year, I would. Uh, but, I, but, you know, just you know, trying, to keep, trying to keep the budget down. So each one of them has got $1,000. Yes, sir. The, la the last two years plus the raise. Okay. So you must have hired them at a very low salary because, to be honest with you, from the looks of these uh, numbers here in, the, uh, in your budget worksheet, um, you've got people coming in at $23,000. You have uh, the average. Uh, you have 29000 anywhere from 29000 down to 23000 uh, or $20, uh, $25,000 um, in last year's salary. And these are, like I said, these are dispatchers that are going other to other counties for more money. And they are, and, and what, what the problem that it creates for the community lets you know this. The less trained we have dispatchers, the more, the more problems that we have in dispatch in getting those calls. And the more calls we get, getting those calls over to either law enforcement or fire and EMS, and the more calls that we as county commissioners get with, why did it take so long for them to get here, and and that's part <clears throat> of the problem. Okay, actually, the actually the dispatchers, you know, when I first started, you know, that's you know we had some issues of of you know retaining people, but actually they're they're the the least problem I have so far. Uh, you know, we've we've got you know pretty much up to staff, and the ones that we hire are we are we retaining them. Could you tell me what your attrition rate is for last year? No, I'd have to look it up, uh, Commissioner. You said that the, the, what the, the attrition rate is, what your turnover rate is in your dispatch. No, I'd, I'd, have, to, I'd have to look it up, but it's, it's, I ain't had to hire a dispatch in the last six months or more. Uh, we, you know, pretty much, we're pretty much up the, the staff on them. Okay, that's not, it's, it's not the story that I'm hearing uh, in other places. And it is something that we, I know, I know we need to deal with. Yeah. I mean, well, I, mean now, I can. I don't know how I many's can, left, but I do know one that left had nothing to do with pay, had nothing to do with anything other than he just didn't want to be a dispatcher. <clears throat> he left one job and went to another job. So that's that one. I don't know how many you've had, but that one's completely unrelated if it was that one. Yeah, the, the dispatchers, I mean, that's, you know, they're, they're my least problem right now because they are, uh, I think I may be lacking one, but, they, but, but the ones I've hired, they've, uh, you know, trained up and doing a good job, and, and uh, they're, they're staying with me. Mr. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Commissioner Richardson, I, uh, I appreciate what you're saying, and I'm, I think we're here for discussion, so I'm going to kind of have to say what, I, what I'm thinking and we'll try to see what we can get from there. But... Uh, I had a discussion with the sheriff, and I asked him to see if he could do something for us. At the end of the day, I feel like he went and, and did something for us. Would I like to have a great big number there? I would. I, uh, it's, not, it's not what I want to do is sit here and beat up the sheriff or the sheriff's department. I, I mean, I, I feel like that uh, what you've come back with is close. I, by saying that, though, I, I do say at the end of the year that I, I hope the sheriff's able to give us something. But, you know, I, I don't want to turn, I don't want to just sit here and just just beat and beat and beat and, and uh, I mean, I, if you feel like you, if, if you feel like you could get to, to uh, you're at 9964 right now on the total. Yes, sir. I would be on board at 9950. That'd be 235,000 back to us right now. And then you try to do what you can for us over the year. Now, that's just my thoughts. I mean, you got a whole board here. But I, I do feel like you could, over the year, that we could get something back, that you'd have something for the county. And I, I'm, I would be in support of that. I mean, that's just my thoughts. I would like to get the rest. What? Mr. Yep. Chairman, one quick, one yes, quick sir. thing. I, I do remember where that sixty-something thousand dollars was. That was smart cop payment, final smart cop payment. Okay, yes, sir. That's in this year's <clears throat> budget, though. Yeah, but it, we want it. It's going to be. It'll be out of it. Out of it. Twenty twenty one. Won't be in twenty twenty one. We're right. looking at getting it put into um, what monies that would be paid back. Right. So it wouldn't be in the budget, and then keep on going into the next <coughs> budget, the next budget. All right. Mr. Chairman, I yes, sir. I would uh, 
appreciate what the sheriff is doing. He, I think he went back and, and took his pen, I guess, sharpened it up and, and come up with the best that he did. I appreciate you doing that. And I'm comfortable, um, Commissioner Stapleton said, uh, 235, the 230, something up in there. I'm pretty much comfortable where you got it. I think you did the, probably the best that you can do. Um, in your position, you got to have dispatches, you got to have deputies, you got to have the officers on the road, um, and they protect us. That's what they're for. They're for protection. And in order, in order to be competitive, they have to have some type of incentive, some type of pay, in order to keep those individuals here. That, that's that's hard on you trying to keep road deputies, as well as the state. You know, the state is able to pay more money. But if I was a younger man, and and, and I probably would seek different from the state. But uh, just because at my age right now, I'm, I'm pretty much comfortable where I'm at. But uh, regard to Mr. Stapleton, I'm comfortable where you where you at right now. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Commissioner Fleming. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I think what Commissioner Stables are now asking for is Plan C <laughs> to come down just a little more. Uh, I know you worked hard on it, and I agree with the Commissioner. We're not here to beat you up. I mean, we're here to ask of you like we did everyone else, you know, sharpen your pencil. I think you've done that. Uh, I do like that round number, though. It adds a little more what we have going on here and other things we have and you mentioned it earlier you know if something catastrophic happened or you needed to come back to us that's what that money would be sitting there for so just always keep that in mind too it doesn't doesn't matter where it sits it's for whoever needs it so okay so you're you said the 230 235 number yeah it, it just made your your uh nine million Instead of nine million nine sixty four, it made it nine million nine hundred and fifty even. Is what I was. Yes, ma'am. I was. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. One more comment. I, I don't want it to be, uh, thought that I don't think that you, that you, did what you needed to do, what you felt like is right for your budget. To get it down, um, and I don't want to minimize the effort that was placed that was put into this from you or your team. Um, but I will reiterate, uh, and I'm probably on the losing end at this point. But I will reiter re reiterate that we do not need two contingencies in this county uh, for this. Um, that's what we have contingency for, and um, and if we go back and we look at the numbers in the past two years. Uh, of what was turned back even after the payments were made. Uh, we're looking at then we're from uh, 350 to 450 um, back each year. And that's, that's a, I think that's a conservative estimate. So again, I don't, I understand that you want to make sure the funding is there so that you're not biting your nails through the whole, throughout the whole year trying to make ends meet. But I also want to want you to understand that when that money's turned back and it's in the final four, forfeiture it's 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 restricted for the most part um, to a point it's going to require a pretty good move from us and and I, I think that that's if we have it in contingency over here and because this is um, not as good of a year as we had last year as far as a rollback rate I just think we can do a little bit more but again I'm just going to stay by what I said um, as far as the the dispatch is concerned. Um, I know you manage that, but this is from all of the rumblings that I hear. It's still an issue, and I, I still think it needs to be addressed. So. Um, I understand, um, but like I say, the you know the dispatch they're actually the least of my problem as far as uh, you know hiring help and retaining help. You know, you know the ones I think I just like have one opening left. In the, in the last two years, um, you know, I gave all the dispatchers, you know, up their pay and gave each of them a thousand plus the, the um, uh, regular, regular uh, bump in salary. Um, so so we, we brought them up, you know, because of just what you're saying, you know, the other, other counties, you know, pay more. So, so that's why we've we done that to get good help and retain help. So, and, and it's helped, you know, and so that's why 
you know, we've we've retained uh, the ones we've we've hired, and and uh, and then Dion Hernandez, she does a, a heck of a job up there uh, in training them and and uh, getting that thing squared away for me. It's it's it's, it's really has, has come leaps and bounds since I've been there. I I know I'm patting myself on the back, but it, but it has. I mean, I know I know that you get may get some complaints, but I mean I can would like to talk to them and assure them that you know that. Uh, I am looking out, you know, for our dispatchers, and, and like I say, when you call 911, that dispatcher is going to the first one you're going to you're going to you're going to talk to. So just like you say, we need some some good qualified help up there, and and that's what you know I've 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 done. And here again, you know, it's it's all about money. You get the you know actually the more money you can pay someone, maybe the the better quality help. But I've got some good got, have some good help up there. On the on the contingency part, you know when. I'm not sure I follow you on that part there because, you know, when you, and I'm, I might be, you're saying a contingency in, in my budget. When you turn back those funds, where do they go? Well, they go back to uh, find a forfeiture. Exactly, but what, but what I'm saying is that you know, it's because you know, and here again, I'm patting myself on the back. It's because that you know we watch a dollar. You know, we we watch what we spend. Um, you know, we don't we don't go out and buy the most expensive cars. You know, and we, and we cut corners. You know, so so we will have you know stuff left over. And I gave the example of, you know, we had an inmate that got hurt, and for whatever reason they flew him out, and that was a seventy thousand dollar bill. Now we was able to get that down, but you have a couple of inmates that you have to get fly out. There's one hundred forty thousand dollars, so there's that cuts your your money down. So what I'm saying, they're just yeah, I don't want to look at it as a contingency. I would look at it as 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 we the sheriff's office is doing a good job in in budgeting our money and make sure we 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 uh, spend the tax uh, payer money wisely is is why I look at it. I don't look at it as a contingency. Uh. Well, I, and and again, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna here be here to beat you up, and I'm I, and I don't want that to be uh, considered. I'm trying to work on basically trying to get our our contingency up so that we can deal with issues that come up and arise and, that that. That will arise throughout the year, and I'm, so, and I'm uh, sure that there's other uh, constitutional officers that give money back too, you know, um, which is good, you know. So what I'm saying, this is what by me giving it back, you know, is I, I wish you wouldn't look at it that way. I just, I mean, I just, I, I mean, I hope you that you see that we we are, um, you know, looking after the taxpayers' money. I, I do recognize that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, one question. Yes, sir. I'm sitting here looking at these uh, dispatcher salaries. Did you tell me why the uh, there's four four salaries that are in the mid uh, 30s range, and the rest of them are around 26? The the longevity. The the, the ones the that's been there. The, the the one that's been there the longest. They you know they they we got some that's been there for 20 some years. So every year they get, you know when, when we get a raise, so their 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 salary increases. Okay, um, I wasn't aware that that increased enough to get. Go from mid twenties to the mid thirties. Yeah, when you've been there over that far of that. Yeah, there's some that's uh, and they're twenty twenty five years. You know, so it so that's there would be higher than the one to start now. Okay. Is that it? That's it. Did y'all have anything else on that for the sheriff? Just asked him if he would consider that number. Um, I'm good with that number, or I'm good with his number. I'm not. It, I know it's a round number. Uh, I feel like we we asked him to go back and cut, and he did. And I don't want to beat him up any more than than what he is. And I'm not saying that he will do it, but all of our constitutional officers have done a good job over the years of staying within their budget and bringing money back at the end of the year, and. I don't want to set a precedent for them to say, well, we got to spend it or we won't get it back type si this situation either. Um, not saying that you would, but that's, that's the other side of this coin if we, if we go cutting too much on them. So uh, well, whatever direction the board wants to go, but I appreciate you coming up with the cuts that you did with what you did come back with this time and what you did earlier in the budget, the 78 from the vehicles last year, that's a thousand shy of 300,000. So it was $299,000 total cuts. So um, I don't want to forget about that, the 78, even though it was those additional vehicles. So just 
need to know what the what the board wants to do or what direction we want to go. Um, Mr. Fleming, earlier you, I, I, I wasn't following you on what you said. Or were, you, were were you satisfied where the sheriff's at, or were you? I'm satisfied where he's at. Or were you satisfied with Mr. What Mr. Staple was requesting? Well, what sheriff had? Okay. Two hundred twenty-one. All right. Um, I guess we got two recommendations for either where the sheriff's at or at the nine million nine hundred and fifty thousand. So. Well, you have three recommendations, but you didn't listen to mine. Well, I got three recommendations, but <laughs> I was trying to count votes, and I wasn't getting to one on yours. So. <laughs> um, so I guess it, it sounds like it's going to be t probably two two with you to tiebreaker. So I, I guess he's going to get his say tonight. He's going to get his say on which way you want to go with it. Yeah. Um, I'm not happy with the budget at all where it's at. Um, I'm not happy with, uh, with, I think you did a good job in cutting, and I think you're going to do a good job in bringing back uh, money to the county. But I think there's room for more. So if I had a choice between the two of them, I would go with Mr. Stapleton. Is that? It, Mr. Chairman, and also, I, we all do agree, Sheriff, you're a great steward of the people's money. There is no one questioning that. Uh, I think, just like I said, we've asked everybody to cut, and, and, and you're helping us achieve that goal. Um, but like I said, if if you were to go with one of these two recommendations, I mean, again, that money's there for emergencies if, if you need it, along with anyone else. That's what it's there for. But just want to keep that on your mind as you make your decision. Thank you. So where are we at? Rounded at three uh, two. Rounded at nine nine fifty. So that's a recommendation from. Commissioner Richardson, where are you at, Mr. Fleming? Are you at the? I'm at the. I'm sticking. Like I said, I'm sticking with the 221. All right. With the sheriff. Mr. Hale. I, I like the round number. If it's something the sheriff thinks he can manage. Mr. Stapleton. I'm gonna go with what uh, Commissioner Richardson said. <laughs> What was that? Three something. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, I'm at the nine nine five vote. Right. Just trying to keep the mood light. It gets a little tense in here when you start talking big numbers. <laughs> Nobody right. wants to give an inch. And I we understand. appreciate what you're doing. We appreciate what everybody's doing. It's tough. It's tough business. It is. It's uh, we're we're the bad guys, and that's that's just the way it is. You know, we. I don't I don't want to upset anybody. Trust me, I don't. It's just uh. It's our our duty, and that's what we got to do. So, Mr. Chairman, it's you. I'm gonna stick where I was at. I I appreciate what he's done, and but it's looking like it's 950, Sheriff. Can you can you live with that? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 I can. You know, it's it's not that you know that much there. You know, we'll we'll be able to you know find it somewhere to you know to cut it out. Um, I, you know, I just I just. We should went and look at you know the extra money as as a contingency fund. It's you know it's it's there. I mean, it, and again, I, I appreciate the last two years you know that I've come before y'all. Y'all have been you know real good at giving me what I wanted and and upgrading some of the stuff, and it's and it's really worked. And you know, just as I mentioned before, you know, by going to Smart Cop, you know, we were able to do the uh, the, the UCR report. And if not, you know, we would have had to done the smart cop. You know, I, I would have been coming and saying, "Hey, just be thinking about it. We've got to spend this X number of dollars because I'm not, you know, in compliance with the UCR." So all the stuff that I've done in the back here is 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 coming to pay off, since we don't have to, uh, you know, bring out that big money again. You know, and, and here again, I, I I appreciate all that you have have done. The board has done for the last two years. Um, and I understand, you know, things tied, and I want to save the taxpayers' money just like y'all do. Um, but then, at the end of the day, I got to, you know, provide a service, you know, because uh, if not, then it, that does reflect on me about, you know, that the sheriff's office can't do their job, and that's, you know, that's my main goal is to serve the people here in Swanee County. And unfortunately, we need more money than, you know, than where everybody wants to do that for. But on the, I just, I just wish you wouldn't look at it as a contingency fund. It's just that, you know, because we're, you know, we are. 
you know, try to save a dollar, don't buy the most expensive stuff, and you know, scrimp and save that. You know, this is this is how you know we we are uh, good to the, uh, stewards of the taxpayers' money we do give back. And we recognize y'all are, and that y'all do, absolutely. And we appreciate everything you do, and and you know overall in the, in the last three years you've you've had a good run at it at budget time. I think yeah. we we mean it's been a pretty hefty increase since. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I, and I appreciate it, and and I, that's why I I kind of mirrored last year except for the raises, you know. Right. Uh, and and what's I explained which part of that, you know, and and actually the employees want to raise and. They looked for me to, to, to give that to them, and that's why I didn't cut that part because you know I you know I got I got some good people working for me. You absolutely do have good people working for you, no matter what people say about your office. Yeah, that, I, I do. I got a, a I got I do got a good crew all all the way around. I sure do. Uh, I appreciate that, and I I definitely would not take away any of their raises. Uh, yes, sir. But if I can tell you this, uh, you're going to have a little bit more of a, a welcome board if something comes up. Uh, and we have to pull something out of contingency to help you out. Yes, sir. So that, uh, so. Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. I, I know that 14000 is going to be, you're going to have to scrape to find it, but I mean, like you said about District 5, you can probably just cut out a little bit of travel down there and <laughs> okay. come up with that gas <laughs> we, may, we may have to. <laughs> <laughs> mm. All right. What's that bring us to, Nina? Here's the I, I know I spoke with her today. I think I spoke with you too the other day that there's about right. I'm good with that. I'll go with you. So that thirty eight's not going into her budget then? Okay. It wasn't much lower. I talked to her about it. It was only a couple hundred bucks. But so that that thirty eight you're talking about, you'd already figured it it already come out of the contingency. Right. And so you're adding it back into it as well. Okay. Okay. Was that taking care of everything, Mr. Harris? I think it was. Mr. Pratt, if you remember. I didn't bring my packet with me that I had that on the other day, but I, we were forecasting that it was going to cover those that we had listed. They were listed in there, and I can't remember now. I, I think that... <laughs> Barry, did that cover her as well? Yeah, I think that, that we we wound up cutting the budget back, but it's where we were hoping that the amount that we had set aside for the individual uh, it's the individual documents. Yeah, was, was I think that little, if you little. took that cumulative number that we had included, it should cover everyone with right. the anticipation, yeah. even though she wasn't listed right. on there. I'm pretty sure it was the sheriff's office, uh, it's the county offices, our office in, in Glenda. We should be fine. Okay. If not, we'll call the sheriff. I'll leave sheriff alone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Y'all killing him. All right. Are there any other changes we need to make on the budget? Anyone else have anything else they need to discuss before we uh, close the workshop? Uh, um. That. Well, that'll be a budget amendment that comes back from him. Uh, he has to have the, I think it has to go to Tallahassee first. It's to the Department of Revenue. It goes to the Department of Revenue and then comes back. He'll also need a letter from us uh, saying that we authorized raises so that he can submit that into that budget too. Uh, I'm, I met with him and discussed that today as well. Anything else? Uh, then we'll close the budget workshop and we'll go back into our regular board meeting. <laughs>
Mr. Chairman, I have a minor. Yes, issue. sir. I was going to bring that up. You said you had something else to discuss. Yes, sir. Um, I told you that uh, Eddie Hand is going to be serving as our interim chief. We need to move that, put his name on that credit card, it has the board's name on it, and it needs to have his name on it as well for fire services. So if the board doesn't object, we'll go ahead and handle that. But I wanted to bring it to your attention. You need a motion? If you want to make a motion, that'd be fine, or entertain a motion. Oh. Do I have a motion to put? I'll make a motion. Mr. Hand's name on the fire rescue credit card. That was Second. Mr. Stapleton. Got a motion by Mr. Stapleton. Second by Commissioner Richardson. Any other discussion? Hear none. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. That's all I had. That's all you had. All right. At this time, we'll open the floor to public comment and concern. Anyone wishing to speak, they'll make their way to the podium. Name and address for the record. Y'all don't all rush at once. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Chairman and Commissioners, I just wanted to publicly recognize our command staff and, and our honor guard and a few of our other staff members that put in countless hours last week to make sure Chief Summers was honored and recognized uh, in the manner that he deserved. We had, a, we had a group of about 25 uh, folks that worked from 7 in the morning till 2 or 3 in the morning some mornings to make sure that the that, that service went the way that it was supposed to go. And I just wanted to make sure that, that, that they were recognized for the efforts that they put in because it turned out to be a phenomenal service. And I was very, very proud of them. So, thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I want to thank the city. Yes, sir. I, I, uh, Chief, I, I just uh, tell you that I was floored at the uh, at the job that you all did. Um, you, you definitely honored him, and um, and you honored his family. And uh, I, I was I can't say enough about the show uh, the the show out of all of the EMS and fire rescue from around the area. I was I was, uh, uh, I was very much impacted. So. Um, Kudos to your guys, but I know you did it out of love, not out of uh, duty. Definitely, and I've been going through, we've, we've been receiving sympathy cards and all kind of different letters from departments all over the country. I've gotten through about half of them because of, there's a stack about this big, but they're from as far away as Anchorage, Alaska, um, wow. all up in the Northeast, Midwest, California, I mean, they, they've come from all over the country with sympathy cards for our department and, and his family. Um, and I just, uh, it, it really amazed me at the, the brotherhood of the fire service and how, how it did and, and all of the departments. We had every surrounding county um, helping us with the service itself. Uh, we had an honor guard member from Marion County, uh, Captain um, Pam Driggers spent four days up here that, and she ran the service to make sure she has she actually teaches the honor guard classes at the Florida State Fire College uh, very experienced in what you know she's done over the years that's the one that got on to Mr. Harris about he wasn't in line <laughs> probably <laughs> <There. Shorter laughs> one. Uh, same I, one. I know her, <laughs> and, the, her. Same her one. and the funeral director had a toe-to-toe -to -toe and I think she <laughs> took him I guarantee you <laughs> um, but she spent she spent four days up here uh, planning with us and helping us get get everything put together along with all those other staff members. But it's just it was amazing to me. Um, we had Columbia County, Jefferson County, Dixie County, um, uh, Madison County with trucks covering during the service for and, us. And I'm glad you mentioned that. I was wanting you to bring that up because those counties really stepped. They up. really did. And and like I say, we had you know so many people helping with the service as well. That were that were integral parts of getting stuff moved for us. Columbia County had a had a crew that that moved the platform that we used at the rear of the engine when we loaded Chief Summers up and off. Uh, they they put six guys on it and loaded it up and and left from the funeral home, or from the church back to the um, to the cemetery and had it set and ready for us when we got back. It was just it was just an amazing amount of help that we received, and uh, it's we're getting ready to have an after action meeting so we can get we have all of that stuff documented so we can 
so we can thank those those folks properly for for everything that they did but uh i just it was it was a, a very humbling and overwhelming sight with how many people showed up from from the areas that they came from and the help that they gave us you definitely set a standard don't run off after the meeting i can talk to you about something okay all right anyone else wishing to speak you're none will Close public comment. Mr. Harris, did you have anything else? Administrator comments? No, sir. All right. Board members, comments, requests? Mr. Richardson, do you have anything? <laughs> um, just say that uh, I appreciate the county coming together to get this budget uh, where we needed it. And, um, and I appreciate the sheriff. As much as you probably don't think so tonight, I do appreciate you more than you know. So uh, please don't leave District 5. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. <laughs> oh, Mr. Fleming. Uh, I'd like to uh, say kudos to Interim Fire Chief and to his staff. Um, you know, it's going to be hard, but I know that God, all things are possible. Um, that type of services that go in Swanee County, now you have a standard. And I hope that you don't let that standard any lower because you see how you got all these letters and these cars and, and the news and all the publicity. You have a standard that you have to, to carry out. Thank you. Right. Mr. Hale. I don't really have nothing really other than what's been said here tonight. It was amazing. I want to thank a lot of people in this room reached out. Uh, to the families, and we appreciate that. And just can't say enough about our community and our our friends, uh, different counties that Mr. Hand mentioned. I mean, they were amazing stepping up and covering all the areas that need to be covered. So, thank you, everyone. Thanks, sir. Mr. Stapleton. Yes, sir. Uh, boy, I tell you, it's tough. Sometimes it's hard to find words when you pull out of a funeral like that and those people lining the roads, holding flags. That's, that's tough stuff right there. And uh, just got to realize that uh, everything happens for a reason and brings people together. That's all I got. Thanks, sir. Uh, I don't have a whole lot. Um, I just, Miss Hand, you got some big shoes to fill and I think we all want you to be successful if you need anything uh, don't hesitate to ask any of us uh, and I'm sure everybody feels the same way um, it was a rough week uh, was, everybody did pull together and uh, honored Chief Summers and, and his family and uh, coming back seeing everybody on the side of the road with those flags and I, I don't know if this was the right word to use for it but I, I felt a little bit of pride for Mr. Summers absolutely, uh, absolutely. it was you know that I mean it was just uh, it, it amazed me just Job, it was bystanders coming yeah. coming so and yeah. Mr. Chairman if I can I do want to say thank you for your speech uh, absolutely it, it was, it was thank you. amazing actually but um the uh, other other thing um like it's crazy they, they, they say it comes in threes sunday night uh my cousin 34 years old was walking down the hall of his house and uh, he went into diabetic coma and just boom gone just like that yeah. and then uh sunday night miss uh donna harden in brantford her mother passed away that's the town clerk for those that don't know so Keep my family and Miss uh, Harden's family, and the Summers family, and the Hill family, and everyone affected, in your prayers. Um, other than that, I don't have anything else. No one else does. Mr. I'm, Chairman, I would say this, just to brighten up a little bit. <laughs> go Gators! No, <laughs> here we go. Here, here. Hearing nothing else, I have a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. All in favor, say aye. Aye.
I'm once again, I'm the only non-